My father name will not be done because I'm I have been redeemed. Yes. I have been redeemed from the This of week, God. you will conquer. Yeah. This week, you will overcome. Yeah. This week, your basket of testimonies shall be full. Yeah. Nothing will stand in your way. This week. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. you believe that, shout and believe in Amen. Yeah. This week, you will say, The Lord God is my strength. Wherever you are going, you have an angel. Why do you need angel to direct you, to protect you, to lead you? Prostrated on his face, begging God on behalf of the 
Israelites, Joshua was by the door. Go study. So automatically when Moses wants to go, what will God give? He's the man that has made himself available. He has diligently followed Moses. So God said, bring him out and lay your hands on him in front of everybody. And the Bible said the spirit of wisdom that was on Moses rested upon Joshua from that day. Because Moses laid hand. One can lay hand. But if the heart does not connect, nothing gets transferred. People, I don't know why I'm going this way. I didn't plan to go here, but I believe mean, somebody needs to hear it. If your heart does not unite with the person that you are supposed to follow, his grammar may be worse than your own. He may come from the 19th century, but if God said, your lifting is tied to this man or to this woman, and you refuse, you can't get anything from God. Amen. Amen. If you check through scriptures, somebody must follow somebody before they get to where they need to get to. Why? Because if you can't take instruction, you cannot, you will misuse power. And nowadays, there are Christians that can't be corrected. They don't want correction. So when we say, ah, uh -uh, what you have done is wrong, who is it to correct? What does he know? I have three, three masters. And they leave, and God is saying, ah, 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 you are missing your destiny. Amen. Amen. People, the Bible says, the child that the father loves, he rebuke. Yes. And the Bible says, no correction is palatable for now. But in the end, it bears fruit. Amen. Amen. I always tell people, I am supposed to be your coach. Go and study coaches. I'm not a spectator of anybody. I'm supposed to be a coach. When the spectators are clapping for the athlete, the coach is saying, no, you can do better than that. The coach is shaking his head, come on, you can do. That time is too late, you need to do. That's coaches. I'm supposed to demand the more from you so that you can step up to greater than we are. In the kingdom of God, the way home is the way down. If you cannot follow, you can't go up. You, in the world, you may make yourself rich. The Bible says those that make themselves rich, they are there, but he said in the head, it is so. But there are those that God make rich, or that God lift up. Amen. Amen. Let's be people that we follow. We are never God as put you stay there until we are instructed to leave. And don't lie on God. Don't tell me to leave. Hmm. See a lot of Christians doing that. Even pastors. I'm leaving that place. Why? Because they are facing challenges. Don't leave. Don't leave. The Bible says, even if the anger of the king is against you, don't leave your duty post. The king is angry at me, but I'm going to be there. Sir, I'm here, sir. Please have mercy. What do you want me to do, sir? You want me to roll on the floor and roll? Not that, hey, hey, what does he think I have? Amen. Amen. You will not miss it. Amen. That is one key area. Thank you, Lord. Now I see the connection. Because I was wondering why it's leading me down. That's one key area where some people's prayer are not answered. Because they have left where God has them to be. And when you leave where God said be, it doesn't matter how many times you pray, it will not be answered. Because until you go back, until Moses went back to Israel, or to Egypt, he knew he was supposed to deliver the people. But he moved ahead of God. And for 40 years, God had to teach him the lesson. A prince became a shepherd. A prince, he was brought up as a prince. And he became a servant of uh, uh, Zipporah's dad. What's his name? Uh, the, uh, Moses' brother, father in law. What's his name? Jethro. He became, for 40 years, he followed a useless man that. Nothing was written of him in the Bible, except what the advice he gave Moses. A prince, you know what a prince means in Egyptian context? Servants there, he had to learn how to do things by himself. But when his obedience was complete, God met him and said, now I have sent him. And he, was, he still wanted to be given an excuse, but he went back. 
He went back. So even if you are here today, you have taken steps out of line. The mercy of God will cover you. Yeah. The mercy of God has covered you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. It is good that we know how to pray. It is good. And we've been looking at the different kinds of prayer. The different kinds of prayer. And the one that we started talking about last week is what? The prayer of praise and worship. In fact, this is the highest form of prayer. See, there is category in prayer. We have treated the prayer of faith, which is good. That is the prayer to change things about your personal life. But the highest in the prayer's uh, hierarchy is the prayer of praise and thanksgiving. Prayer of praise, worship, and thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Now, open to one place quickly. We'll read that scripture. Uh, if God permits, we'll pick it up. Go to Acts. I'm going to preach from my spirit today. I'm going to bypass my notes. Acts chapter 13. Just have five more minutes. Acts chapter 13, verse 1, beginning. Now, let's look at scripture. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, and the Bible named five of them Barnabas, we know who Barnabas was, uh, Simeon, uh, called Negro or Niger, okay, Lucius of Cyrene, Manai, who has been brought up with Herod the Tetra. You see, this guy, Manai, was in the king's palace. He was a man of influence, but he was also a servant of God. He was a prophet, and he was either a prophet and a teacher, or a teacher of both. Amen. Now, next verse. And the minister to who? The minister to the Lord. And they were in fasting. And uh, the Holy Spirit now spoke. During the atmosphere of praise and ministering, worshiping God, the voice of God came. And the Lord said, Separate for me Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I am called them. So the call has been from the foundation of the world. But the timing started that day. I don't know what God created you to do. The call has been there before you were born. But there is the right time to activate that call. For Paul, for Saul and Barnabas, that was that day. And then verse 3, and when they had fasted and prayed, and the people that were there, I believe it was the whole church, they laid hands on them, then they sent them on their way. Verse 4, and being sent, so they being sent forth by the Holy Spirit, they departed. And that was how the, the story of the great man Saul, now called Paul, started. But I want you to look at one thing here. In verse, uh, verse, the verse one said, the minister, verse two, said the minister to the Lord that they were not petitioning God. They were not asking God for anything. They were not begging God for anything. The Bible simply says, the minister to the Lord. Now, many times when we come to church, we do one of these two or three things. We minister to ourselves. The choir minister, they will try to lift you up to worship God. Then, when we are going to preach, God, through the verse of preaching, minister to us, reveal himself, meet our needs. Then, when we are going to pray, we ask God for something. So, there is hardly a time, or if the time is so small, that you will come to a service, and that service will be dedicated to asking nothing, just worshiping God. And that was what they were doing that day. That is called, is it ministering to the Lord, is called the prayer of praise and worship, where God is the center of focus. Nobody else, not the pastor, not the choir, nobody wants to be seen but God. That is what we call the prayer of praise and worship. Worshiping God for who he is, worshiping him for what he has done, for worshiping him for making you a child of the kingdom, just praising him, just worshiping him. Amen. That was what they were doing in Acts chapter 13. God made man so that we can fellowship with him. And caught him up without reason. Took a bow. You see, God made a reformed man, but he built woman. The Bible says God built a woman. That's why women are good. They are handcrafted. But it's 
the life of God being a woman out of the man that can complement the man, that can fellowship with him. And when Adam saw, he said, wow, man, wow. That's how the name woman came. Whoa, man. Who? Who? Oh, shakarabasuta. He will tell you, the man did the jibu. Turn around and say, hey, Father, thank you. Hey, this is the bone of my bone. This is the flesh. She shall be called. Whoa, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. God needed our fellowship. God is looking for some. Why do you think God? The Bible says God visited Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. What did they come to do to fellowship? Because man can reason with God. From the beginning, man was created in the same capacity, with the same capacity with God. Amen. Amen. So that is why the prayer of praise and worship is the highest, because that is where you commune with God. You just worship God. Amen. 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 Ministering to the Lord simply means telling God how much you love Him. It is praising Him for who He is. It is thanking him and worshiping him for his goodness and his mercy. Just worship him. It's not about God. Not about, Lord, give me this, Lord, I need that. No. Father, I just, I just want to worship you. I just want to tell you how good you are. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. You are good. You are kind. Has anybody ever told you, I just don't know how to manage this whole universe. Mighty God. Everlasting Father, King of Men. You just worship Him. That is why David became a man after God's heart. Because he said, Seven times a day, I praise you. Seven times. Just begin to worship God, begin to dance before God, tell Him His mighty, His awesome. Whose eye will not swell? And this is the prayer that we want to give one minute to. The one that we got prayer of petition, prayer of faith, we want to do that one hour. But I've discovered that the way to, it, to God's heart, the Bible says, enter his gate with what? With thanksgiving. Enter his bedroom with praise. When you are praising God, the door swing open for you. You can go into his inner chamber and say, Daddy, I just want to tell you you are good. Imagine if you have children. They just come to you, Daddy, Mommy. I just want to tell you, you are the best parent there is. Yeah, you take care of us. I just want to say thank you. Even if that child didn't ask you for anything, what else can I do for this child? Hmm. So what do you mean? Daddy, I don't need anything. I just want to say thank you. That is the heart of man. A man gets their nature from God. This is the highest form of prayer, and that is what we must do most of the time. Amen. No matter what the enemy said to you, subject him to praise and worship. Let God step in upon the problem, and the problem will be crushed in Jesus' name. I can't go further than this today. I wish I can put you here for another 30 minutes. But please, let's, let's trust God that we'll be able to talk next week and uh, preach this. Last